You obviously love listening to podcasts. Well, have you tried an audiobook? Hi, I'm Kim, and I am an audiobook listener. It's actually my preferred way to, quote unquote, read. And if you haven't tried listening to one yet, go to www.fromringtoveil.com slash freebook to get a free audiobook from Audible. I may have just given you your new obsession. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And you are listening to From Ring to Bell, a wedding planning podcast. Where we share tips and information to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. Without all the stress. Paper items for your wedding with guest host Ginger Her, episode number 80. In this episode, we have guest host Ginger Her in to tell us about the options that are available for paper items and signage for your wedding. Before we get into the interview, we have a little update for you from Neil with Dandy DJ. He was he emailed us or messaged. I believe it was a message. No, it was, no, email. It was an email. Okay. <laughs> he emailed us um, about our episode number 75, things that you need to take to your vendor, things you need to know before you meet with your vendor for the first time. Mm. And he is a DJ. So he had some ideas and um, an update for us to share with you guys. So here's what Neil said. I personally never connect beforehand about where I'm setting up or the amount of room I will have because it almost always changes when I arrive and I'm never informed. It's my job to work with the space I'm given. Any pro should be fluid enough to be able to scale their rig. I do let them know that I need to be within 100 feet of adequate electricity at the reception. My ceremony system is also battery powered. Reason, the mention of the table. You should never have to provide a table for the DJ. A pro DJ will always carry their own, t- their own table. They know exactly how much space their, la- their tabletop, not laptop, tabletop s- setup takes and is critical to have just the amount and absolutely no more. Otherwise, you invite drinks being set next to your electronics. That's never a good thing. My table is an integrated part of what I do. When there is a table provided for me, I appreciate the sentiment, but I have to have it removed so I can set my proper table up. Which kind of makes sense, you know? Mm. It's part of my essential equipment. I would go as far as to say it's a good litmus test when interviewing DJs. If they require you to provide such an essential part of their setup, in my opinion, it speaks to their unprofessionalism. Quote, unquote, (laughs) unprofessionalism. All right. Neil's last thought is placement. You should always try to place the DJ as close to the dance floor as possible so they can better serve the dance floor with leading dances, taking requests, etc. If I'm positioned far from the floor, it really hinders the quality of what I can provide. Also, if the speakers and lights have to be placed far away from the dance floor, that also causes experience to suffer, especially for speakers. If I have to blow out grandma's eardrums in the back of the room in order to be loud enough to reach the dance floor, that's really bad. She's usually sitting far away from the floor in order to be, in order to avoid being near the music. That's right. You know, and I just think that I, we just probably thought, well, duh, <laughs> you got to put them by the dance floor. I, that just seems common sense. Yeah. But I guess sometimes, I guess with the arrangement of the room or whatever, they mm-hmm. don't take into effect to um, a consideration mm-hmm. that they do need to be right next yeah. to the. So thanks, Neil from Dandy DJ, for that insight yes. into where the DJ is placed and if they need a table or not. So we learned a little bit today. I love feedback, especially yes. when it comes to this. You know, we don't want to give bad information. We want the goods. Especially from professionals. Yeah. You know, so Or even from brides or couples that have already had their wedding and they say, oh, it didn't work that way for me. Mm-hmm. Give us that feedback and we'll share it with everybody. We want to give you guys the goods. As we are sure you already know, that Shannon is a paper person. She has to have paper to take notes on and always has a spiral or notebook handy. (laughs) I prefer to take notes on my computer, my tablet, my phone. It was never more evident than when we were at (laughs) Wedding MBA last week. I'm sitting here with my... My knot pad that they gave us, because, you know, the knot gave us freebies. And it's a beautiful silver back 
with a pen, which I love. Yeah. And I'm a notebook person anyway, so I'm mm-hmm. like, yay! And so there was <laughs> not somebody sitting next to me at the beginning. I almost took that one, too. But I didn't. <laughs> so anyway, but yeah, I was over here taking notes, like literally, literally writing them out, you know. Mm-hmm. Every word for word. Not really. But yeah, the key points. And Kim's over here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. We're well, best friends, but we're almost totally, you know. <laughs> well, even though we are that way, yeah. we both love the paper invites yes. and thank you notes. And uh, for me, you know, that kind of stuff is special. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just the feeling and the different. I was a stamper. Mm. I'm not going to lie. When my kids were little, I used to stamp, do stamping up. I did all kinds of cards and I did some, um, what's it called with the pictures and scrapbooks, s- scrapbooks. <laughs> I couldn't remember Scrap that. Scrapbooks. <laughs> I have a few, um, but I really, really enjoyed, I, you know, I'm creative. I like to do that kind of thing. I, I'm not good at drawing. So stamps was great. You know, I could stamp it and color it in mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So I love that kind of thing in the papers. I still have got a box full of papers that I use every once in a while, and I can't get rid of all my stamps <laughs> because I might want to make a card sometime. So I, we both love those those paper goods that we get for weddings, save the dates, invites, and stuff. And I love how they can all be coordinated. They can <laughs> all look the same, you know, have the same handwriting. If you get a really good professional to do all the calligraphy and things like that, and. As you will find out, there are so many fun options for paper to use at your wedding. We are excited to tell you about our friends over at G-Squared Weddings. They are photographers for the couple that are off the beaten path. You want to go get a picture taken at the glacier? Go on a hike? Mountaintop? That's the kind of thing they like. Their style is very earthy and clean and unique. They would like to offer our From Ring to Vell listeners in the Pacific Northwest, Eastern Washington, Montana, $750 off of their VIP or complete package. All you have to do is mention From Ring to Vail and you get this $750 off. Visit www.fromringtovail.com slash G squared to find their website, set up a time to talk with them. Without further ado, let's talk to Ginger. Today we have guest host Ginger Her, owner and principal designer of Chalk Ink Style. She is here today to share with us options for paper items and signage and things like that for your wedding. So thank you for coming, Ginger. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you're here. We, I have to say, we were talking at a networking event not too long ago, Mm -hmm. and I thought, we got to have her on the show because we've been wanting to do something about paper items, but we aren't, you know, aficionados and we are not very uh, confident in doing it ourselves. So we really wanted to talk to somebody about that. So, so glad you're here to tell us all about it. I'm so excited (laughs) because I am like a paper nerd. So (laughs) it is really fun. Yeah. I find there's, there's paper people and Mm -hmm. there are e-people, you Mm -hmm. know, and I guess they can cross line some, but Yes. People who love paper, like like book readers, they have mm-hmm. to have books. Right. They can't listen to books, you know. So um, why don't you just start out kind of telling us your story, where you started and how you became Chalk Ink Style. I have always loved like doodling and art and mm-hmm. paper and all of that since childhood. And I um, have always um, really enjoyed and been fascinated with topography just drawing letters. I just think they're amazing and beautiful, which right. probably sounds really weird, but I <laughs> love them. Um, over time, I just played around with it more and would design little um, flyers and things for church for our church and stuff. And I would decorate for weddings a lot. So fast forward, I don't know, probably 10 years. I think it's been about two years ago two and a half, I had a friend that was getting married and uh, I was decorating for her wedding, kind of styling it, working with all the other people involved. And she asked if I would do some chalkboards. So I did a couple, we did like a dessert bar and some welcome signage and just some fun ones to have around a menu board. And uh, that was kind of the start of chalking and stuff Mm -hmm. for me Mm -hmm. so I did a couple of weddings 
after that, and then about a year and a half ago, I uh, was talking with a friend who works out at Swan's Trail Farm, and um, she encouraged me, along with the owner, to get my business license so that I could work with them as a vendor um, and be part of the wedding guild so I could do the tour and that kind of stuff. So... uh, so that was kind of the kick in the pants I yeah. needed. I mean, I, I still, I've worked even before I got my business. I had started working with local businesses in Marysville to design their ads um, for flyers they would send out a couple times a year. Mm-hmm. And a lot of stuff for church because we're real involved with our church. So yeah. just different events and things. I would make booklets or um, flyers, postcards, whatever needed to be done. So. Wow. So you have a lot of experience then. Yeah. How neat. Did you ever take a calligraphy course or anything like that? I did about a year and a half ago. Uh, my husband and I actually, we How went uh, to Bellingham. There's a cute little stationery store up there and they had a, a well-known calligrapher come in and teach a class. So we did that and it was really fun. I wanted to take it because with lettering, it's really drawing. And so I thought, hey, if I could just learn calligraphy, you know, you can just do it all at once and it would go a lot faster, Mm -hmm. which is a lie. So (laughs) it doesn't go any faster, but it was really fun. And it's really neat to have a new skill set to add. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get talking about weddings. Okay. And first of all, what I'm wondering, what are even the options for paper products for your wedding? What kind of paper things? Like what? So I know that you have a save the date and you have an invitation and you have thank you cards. Right. What else can you do? Uh, It could start with a save the date. One of the things that has been happening more um, in recent times is gals will um, have a little card made or a chalkboard or something to take a picture with to ask um, if people will be their bridesmaids or their ring bearers or flower girls and things like that. Um, Then there's also, along with that, I just had a bride recently that was wanting to do kind of a little booklet for her bridesmaids so that it it was, will you be my bridesmaid or maybe even a step after that, but like what to expect, what are your um, responsibilities, when do you need to be where, what do you need to wear, what are you going to provide as far as like hair and nails? What will the bride take care of? Mm -hmm. And all those kinds of things can be done up in a cute little booklet to hand to your bridesmaids. Um, Then with the invitation suite, a lot of times there's the RSVP and the invitation, like you said, Mm -hmm. uh, as well as a map or um, just even little booklet about the couple or the place, especially if it's a destination wedding, Mm -hmm. there'll be... um, places for where people can stay or different sites in the area, uh, different things like that. So there's a lot there, Mm -hmm. you know, and then also, you know, the, the wedding day itself or a program Mm -hmm. or a booklet or things. I mean, I know some people are doing chalkboards for programs, but there's still paper as another option. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's I kind just of feel a like lot. paper's more traditional. It is traditional, and yet it can be very modern. It just a lot right. of it depends on the style that you have for your wedding and the overall look. So, so Shannon and I, because we're from the South, we're from from mm-hmm. Texas. I know we've told you that. Um, we think that a fan with the program is a very good idea. Okay, <laughs> I mean up here it's not so much, but right. but. You know, south where it's hot and you're sitting outside in a wedding, a fan would be really great. (laughs) I can see that. (laughs) Could you do something like that? Yes, I did. I actually had a wedding this last summer that I put one together for uh, a wedding. So, yeah, and it had, you know, all the program on one side and then other information on the back. So it was two-sided. So you had plenty to look at. (laughs) And it was useful. Yes. We just love things that are useful. Yes. Um, so th- th- then you have um, the menu for yes. reception. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else for reception other than signage that you would need for paper products? Well, you can do like place cards for table settings right. um, and then the table numbers themselves. Right. Uh, it's so hard because 
you know, as time goes on too, there's so many different options of writing on things, That's writing right. on everything. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there are, I love paper, so I would find all kinds right. of ways to use it. So, you know, even if you had like some kind of a napkin ring there that you, you had calligraphed each person's name, so it is a place card oh, and, a, yes. you know, it's just all kinds of different things. Good you idea. Could do. That's going on my tip. <laughs> That's a great nugget. I love I love that. Okay, so that's a, a lot of paper items. It is. Right. So let's get into what options we have, like with style and paper and, okay. and things like that. So okay. take it away. Well, <laughs> there, like with how many different things you can do, there is the gamut of papers themselves and printing because they kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Uh, you know, our most common is just digital printing that you get nice paper. You can do that either through a local printer or there are online sites as well. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of wedding sites or other sites that will do invitations. Um, and so those are just a nice, um, usually you want to go a little bit nicer quality paper because um, one of the first things I was thinking about as we were doing this is your save the date or your invitation suite is the very first taste of what your wedding is going to be right, like. Right. This is the first thing your people get when they get it in the mail and mm -hmm. it sets the tone for what's coming. So it is nice to do the best quality paper you can afford. Mm -hmm. um, so and just, you know, a standard nice paper is good. So let me ask you something. Okay. If you are hand lettering, I mm -hmm. think that's what you said, um, an invitation, but yes. you have 200 of them. Yes. Is it then copied or are you hand lettering 200? Well, that is up to the bride and groom. Wow. There are, you know, there's the whole range of what uh -huh. you want to spend because if each one is hand calligraphed or written out mm -hmm. however you want to do that I mean that takes a lot of time so yes you know because then there's also like watercolor and different things that you can do with mm -hmm. it so if each one is done I mean that is going to be on the higher end of what you can do but it's beautiful too mm -hmm. um, but the other thing that I can do is to write out everything that needs to be done with the calligraphy and then put it on the computer and digitize it. Right. And then from there, then you can, I've only done it once, so it doesn't take me as long as every single piece by hand. Right. Um, and we can have copies made of that. So. That's really neat. So it's your handwriting. Mm -hmm. You're not just using fonts that you find and yes. putting that together. That's so cool. Yeah. I can use I like fonts that. as well, but it is right, fun right. to have because it's a little bit more of a personal touch yes, to have absolutely. that hand lettering. I mean, that's why they're hiring you because right. you have that skill and talent right. that why wouldn't you use that? That's so neat things that you can do these days. I know. It's that's crazy. so cool. <laughs> and so then you um, then you have tons of different kind of paper and right. you, you want to use a good quality. Right. What do you suggest? Like, what's your favorite? What do you tell your, your brides that? Well, I so I only touched on the digital printing. So okay. there's that. Uh, there is also um, letterpress printing, which is my favorite. Okay. Um, <laughs> it is a, um, they use more of a cotton type of paper. Okay. I'm just getting one out right now because I have to talk with my hands. So um, <laughs> it is very thick. I'll hand you one so you okay. can look at it. And what oh, they yeah. do, it's kind of an old-fashioned press where they actually have, like, I mean, they don't set letters like they used to in the old days. Right. They, do, they can. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times now with the modern age, they've come up with ways of doing um, the press. So, like, I just recently went to a workshop, and um, we did, here's, um, like, the front of my business card which we can put a picture of that in if you want, oh, yeah. and how it turned out then yes. when it was printed. Absolutely. So it really, it, it indents pressed. the paper, yeah. and it with ink on it, it recesses it. They call that debossing. So it's down in the paper, and it gives a beautiful uh, look to it. It's very, very 3 elegant. Yes, You know, it, it kind of stands out. Mm -hmm. Even though it's pushed in, it stands yes, out. You know what it I mean? does. And that's really cool. So your... What do you call this part? Plate, I think okay. is what they call it. This is the plate. Okay, so on the plate, there are 
letters yes stuck on there and then mm-hmm. somehow however they they yes. magically do it's that a process and then they punch that or press yes. it press so, it into yeah there's that. two parts to the machine you have your um your plate on the one side that they mm-hmm. adhere it and then they get the paper lined up and then they sandwich it together and it indents the paper then. that is so. really pretty and this card is like you said it's a thicker paper yes i really like that it yes. feels substantial it well feels the like... cotton really can take that pressure and absorb it okay um and it works with the ink really well so that's really pretty yes. and then on the you open it and you can see it's indented yeah you, know, you can feel that mm-hmm. That's really pretty. So, I like and I that. brought just a digital version of that, so you can see kind of side by side. It's the oh, same yeah. file, uh, but one is digital and one is letter pressed. So, and you can tell. I mean, yes. you can definitely tell between the two because the pressed one, it, again, it looks very kind of three D. It kind of yes. pops off the page, mm-hmm. whereas the printed one is just you know just it's printed. Nice. It's, uh-huh. It is pretty, right? But it's just not as. It uh, doesn't have the impact right. as the, the pressed. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah. So then also there is uh, gold foil stamping, which works mm-hmm. a lot the same as the letter press. Um, it takes that heat and pressure um, and presses it onto the paper. Um, so that is another option that's kind of popular right now is that gold foil. Right. So, I mean, as we go, we're kind of working up the price spectrum. Okay. Digital is kind of your standard that it's not most cheap when you're doing yeah. a wedding and nothing <laughs> is, but it's the most affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have letterpress and the gold foil is probably just a smidge higher than that. Um, and then you have the hand lettering of everything and I did bring a sample it's not an invitation but just kind of a a fun um watercolor and then calligraphy on on watercolor paper so I used to do stamping Mm -hmm. um and this this is very similar to that you have the 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 really nice fun paper Mm -hmm. and then you have your ink on top of that and then you have the watercolor um and it's just very kind of um I'd say vibrant, you know, it's mm-hmm. just real. You can tell somebody made this. Right. And it and it, they put their talent into this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I like that, too, a lot. That's really pretty. And it's a thicker paper, too. Mm-hmm. And it I guess is. you could probably do it on a thinner paper, but this is probably. a really nice one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So on the, you said gold foil. Mm-hmm. Can you do other colors of their metallics? There are. Uh, there, I'm waiting for my packet from the uh, letterpress shop that I was working with, but there is a whole range of colors. There's white, there's silver, gold, copper, rose gold. I mean, anything awesome. that you can think of, pretty much. Um, I know color-wise. that metallics are really hot right mm-hmm. now, and they're going to be next next season also. So that, oh, I'm like, yeah. I'm like... A black card with like copper on it. Yes. Oh, wow. how cool that would be! Beautiful, so, but that'd be very like classic, kind of mm-hmm. modern type. So, okay, next. What's the next? What's the most lavish one? Well, probably the ha- like hand lettering everything mm-hmm. is. Um, again, you can choose the different papers, but probably the top of the line paper wise is going to be your handmade paper. Oh, yeah. so that. That is one that you're not going to really be able to do very well with digital printing. There are some that can do it, but it tends to be very thick mm-hmm. and linty. So right. even the cotton paper that they use for letterpress isn't going to work very well with your standard um, machines when you go to your local printer, uh, just because the lint will snag and it doesn't yeah. feed through right. So, but it is beautiful, and especially it takes letterpress well and foil and all of that. So, and it just has its own charm uh, because a lot of them they're put into molds and then um, they're either big molds and they they're scored and then torn so they get that deckled edge, mm-hmm. or even just. Um, individual ones that have you know it's one single mold per card ah uh, yeah so i mean you're looking at a higher end piece when Definitely. they're all made like that by hand but they're just gorgeous i bet mm-hmm. so like if you're having more of a small intimate wedding you might could afford something yes. like that mm-hmm. you know to have them all hand lettered i'm getting goosebumps that sounds so pretty <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's a lot of options when it comes mm-hmm. to to the paper products 
What about style for paper products? I mean, is it anything that you can imagine? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> is there anything that you can think of you can't do? I don't know. Do you have something in mind? Well, like- well no, I'm thinking, okay, so you can do, of course, the classic, traditional, beautiful mm-hmm. invitation or paper products. And then you can do more of a modern. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, we're going to be doing a shoot, a more of a geometric type right. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've seen tons of beautiful pictures of, of invitations and paper stuff right. in that kind of right. feel. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I'm trying to think. I don't know. There's probably nothing you can't do. I don't think that there really is because you can have a total eclectic wedding. I really, it. I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about paper and mm-hmm. working with people is that, you know, whatever style you have can kind of be converted into paper. And, you know, it's going to look different for each and every bride and groom, uh, what their invitation is going to look like, because it depends right. on who they are and mm-hmm. their wedding. And maybe, I mean, it comes because I like to style weddings and right. stuff. And so for me, they all go together to make it that kind of one cohesive yeah. whole. So, yeah. yeah. And like you said, that's your first, you know, that that save the date or invitation is your mm-hmm. first taste of this wedding. And it sets the tone and it mm-hmm. shows these these guests that what you're what to expect from your wedding. Right. Oh, this is a really modern looking right. thing. I bet we're gonna have really modern, you know, without spoiling it right. if you don't want to. Yeah. It's just a little snack yeah. snack tidbit <laughs> what's coming. <laughs> Anything else about paper products that you want to share before we move on to signage? Um, I think there it's really great to work with a designer mm-hmm. who can take into consideration all these things that um that knows about the different papers, colors, uh, and especially the one thing too is the timing of it all because it's, I think, it's something that people don't think out in the early part of the planning for their wedding. So right. you think, oh, I'm getting married, I have my ring, now I need to get my dress and my venue, which mm-hmm. you do. Yes. Uh, but also you need to be thinking through, you know, what pieces do I need to have? Because, you know, a save the date is anywhere from six to 12 months ahead. True. So you need to be kind of thinking through and it's nice when they all go together. So you don't have some random save the date card and then your mm-hmm. invitation and everything else looks completely different. So it is good to work with someone who can kind of talk through all the different pieces that you want to have at your wedding or leading up to it so that you can plan that out accordingly and um, have everything done at the right time. And right. That totally makes sense. That mm-hmm. really does. And you're right. We don't think about that. Mm hmm. It, it probably in terms of when we need to have it out right. and what we want it to look like. Right. Now, I do have a question. I thought of something. Okay. If a, if a uh, couple has a picture that they want to include mm-hmm. on their save the date or invitation or mm-hmm. something like that, how do you work that in? Well, that is, it's pretty easy, really. Uh, you would just need to make sure that you had... Um, more of a professional picture done, mm-hmm. at least a good camera if a professional photographer didn't take it. A, a phone picture is not going to be uh, big enough because... Mm-hmm. Uh, High enough quality. Yes, probably. because, you know, in order for the qu- for the quality of that picture to be good, you're probably looking like at a couple inches of a picture. Right. So right. you have to have a higher resolution picture mm-hmm. in order to, for it to print and not be all pixelated and grainy. Right. So, um, but that is actually really easy to tie okay. in. And um, then you can put hand lettering over the top mm-hmm. of it, work around it. It's it's really neat when it's done like that. It really personalizes it. That's right. So that's yeah. right. Okay. So enough about paper items. Okay. Let's talk about signage. Okay. Okay. First question, are chalkboards still in or are they going out or here to stay? Well, I was thinking about that question because you sent that to me okay. ahead. And it kind of just depends on is it in for whom? Like. Right. Trending magazines, I think you're seeing less and less of that kind of thing. And yet at the same time, they're really f- helpful and functional and beautiful, especially mm-hmm. when you get someone who does a good job at writing your signage. 
I think they are still great. Right. You know, you're still doing lots. I of still, them. yeah, and I know that right. several of the other gals in our guild are still busy all the time with okay. them. So, are they only for rustic weddings? I don't think so. I think they can be used anywhere. Okay. I mean, I you don't see them as much at modern, you know, as you're looking at pictures of mm-hmm. modern things. And yet, a lot of it has to do with, like, the frame they're in, or are they in a frame? Right. Uh, you know, it can be used anywhere. It just depends yeah. on the setting it's used in, so... Okay. I think they're still great. Okay. And relevant for pretty much any style <laughs> oh, yeah. if you want to. Because, you know, even just the little bits on the a menu board or with each little menu item, dinner or dessert things or things like right. that, they're still really helpful. So Okay. Yeah. Very good. So what other things can you write on for a sign? Okay. So for a sign, which I guess also kind of ties back to invitations as well. Okay. There's like all kinds of things. Like I've seen uh, wood. They can do wood burning on oh, yes. uh, your invitation. It can all be just a little piece of wood, five by seven, like you would normally have. Mm-hmm. But it's all burned with wood. Or it can be laser cut wood. Like there's all kinds of things you can do with that. And so for the signage, you can have it same burn style. You can have it painted. You can do all kinds of that. There's acrylic. So you have mm-hmm. your kind of fun clear glass that you can paint on or have engraved. Uh, there are shells. There are marble things that I was looking at. I, I saw a picture of something that made me think of like, it's just a nice marble square uh-huh. with gold paint across the bottom and you could use it like for a menu board or something. It was oh, just yeah. gorgeous. Um, yeah, and that's very modern. I yes. really like that. I was actually thinking of trying to do that for the photo shoot yeah. coming up, but yeah, so... I mean, mirrors, wood, mirrors, yeah, like driftboard kind of wood, not just, oh, I mean, yeah, yes, yeah, boards, yeah. but like anything that you can think of pretty much can be written <laughs> on. So whether you want it to come off again or right. not, it's another story. <laughs> In fact, I saw um, some pictures of a wedding because I was looking at modern weddings. We're going to be doing a show on modern weddings there. They had, I guess there were acrylic chairs, mm-hmm. so they were see-through yes. and then they had Things, yes, like the names Name written on the card. back instead of at the table. Yeah. It's on the back of the chair. Yeah, I thought that was gorgeous. really. I mean, who thought of that? Yes, <laughs> probably somebody who likes to write and stuff. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Can I write on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. So windows. Mm-hmm. I know we've seen a lot of windows. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're still kind of yeah in I, or not. Yeah. But I just did a couple this summer. So yeah, they're. They're fun. The one challenge with windows and mirrors is photography. Right. Because unless you have, for windows, unless you have something behind them to make it visible, it can be a challenge to see that. Um, And mirrors are so reflective. That's right. So, you know, make sure to talk with your photographer and make sure that they're able to find a way to do that. Because I haven't been able to. (laughs) What I'm trying to do on Instagram, it's like, oh, I'm going to be in the picture. There's just no way around it. So, well, I mean, could you like use like a a frosting on the on it and then right on top of that? Maybe you probably could. That might help. But um, I don't know if it would take away the look. Yes. The look you're going for. Yes. It is beautiful, though. Yeah. Um, on the mirrors they're just gorgeous they are yeah i've been of course all over pinterest Mm -hmm. you know our listeners know (laughs) i love pinterest (laughs) so what kinds of signs are there for for weddings okay well you have your welcome sign welcome to our wedding when guests first walk up you have a lot of people will do a program on a chalkboard or mirror or anything like that so instead of uh, using paper to do that, they would just have one big one. Mm-hmm. I just was looking at a picture online the other day where, like, down the aisle, they had different. Um, I think it was like First Corinthians chapter thirteen, which talks about love. Love mm-hmm. is patient. Love is kind, and all of that. So on each little phrase, there was it was a sign up against a chair. So the, as they're oh, walking yeah. down the aisle, they would see those different parts of the verses. Uh, there's, you know, little 
ring bearer signs. Mm-hmm. You know, here comes the bride. There's uh, trying to think of everything for the, the um, ceremony. The ceremony itself. Uh, one thing that I have seen too is kind of a backdrop idea for either a sign like of wood or cut out wood, or there's um, fabric mm-hmm. that you can use for a backdrop that you can have printed on. Like, so you could have your names and a floral border or something like that, or mm-hmm. for a simple one, just your names. But um, it's a way to add just a little, if your setting isn't the greatest, right. it would add a very pretty and personal touch to your ceremony. I've seen them where they're standing in front of a huge piece of something, Mm -hmm. either it was a chalkboard or wood or something, and they have like a poem or a song or something written on that. Yeah. So if, as you move on to, you know, your reception, then you've got your menu boards, you've got place cards, um, that can, I mean, they're not usually, uh, signs i guess <laughs> but you've got oh, a seating chart a so seating chart, yeah. and you know so they kind of coordinate together sometimes i've seen like a, a little sign on the table of of the right. names yeah that would work too instead of like a seating chart where you walk up and mm-hmm. look at where you're sitting something like that yes so there's that there can be kind of a schedule of events like mm-hmm. dinner at this time dancing mm-hmm. cocktails whatever um, you can also have your menu list at the bar of different um, drinks that are available. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, kind of like you name it, whatever yeah. you want to want it to say. It is really important that you work with someone that kind of understands aspects of design uh, because one of the things, you know, you want legibility, obviously. Of course, yeah. And really making it so that it's easy to read and understand. Because when there's too much text, you kind of just bounce all over mm-hmm. the place and don't really know what you just read. Right. So, <laughs> you know, layout is super important when you're doing all that as well. But, yeah. One thing I really like is the unplugged sign. Yes. <laughs> We've talked about this in quite a few shows about the unplugged. And I'm just seeing more and more and more, especially in the vendor boards, okay. um, you know, mm-hmm. about how frustrating it is for videographers and photographers Mm -hmm. when people are standing in the middle of the aisle and they can't get the shots that the the couple wants from them. So, you know, I really have, have seen some creative, Mm -hmm. um, unplugged type of signs. I really like that. Yeah. I got to do one this summer. So that was kind of fun. fun. Yeah. Yeah. We should probably post a picture of that. Oh, yeah, that would be good. We'll put that in the show notes. So you guys, if if you want to see some of Ginger's work, you can definitely go to our uh, post show notes for episode number 80 and see some of her her work and we will also try to to put together a pinterest page so if it's not on the show notes you'll find it on our from ring to veil pinterest page signage anything else you can think of again like signs are great for everything just mm-hmm. like with paper you've got the gamut of style and um, with frames, frameless, different kinds of materials, um, it really can be reflective of your event. And mm-hmm. so it's great to work with someone who can kind of tie all that together to make your look, your wedding look like it goes together. Right. And in thinking about that, having the same font or lettering or calligraphy mm-hmm. throughout everything mm-hmm. from your save to date until the thank you notes, you know, right. all the way through the wedding kind of makes it more cohesive mm-hmm. and, and you feel like it's not just a right kind of a mishmash of things. Right. And one thing I do enjoy, even if I haven't done your invitations or whatever, is that I, if I'm going to do some signage, is I do like to have a copy of their invitation because right. then I can take whatever fonts that they used for that and incorporate that. So it does still tie into what right. they have. So that's, that is another fun option. Very good. We've gotten a lot of good nuggets from you. (laughs) That's really awesome. All right. So I think we've kind of exhausted the topic of, of paper items and signage for the wedding. Um, Just a few questions for you. What's your favorite thing to do? With regards to the design aspect or anything, 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 really. (laughs) What's your, like when, when a bride brings this to you, you're like, oh yes, I want, I love doing this. Okay. Well, I do really enjoy 
putting the invitation together. But I think my favorite thing is kind of styling the wedding, like working it all out. I guess maybe I'm a control freak. (laughs) (laughs) But just because I like to see things really go together. Uh And so working with the bride and then all of their uh, different vendors, uh, just to make sure that it comes together. Like, yes, I do all the paper stuff and I love that. But, you know, even seeing, you know, making sure if they want a vintage style wedding, they're not getting modern plates from their caterer. You know, so just different things like that. Sometimes people have friends that want to make stuff to Mm -hmm. help and you want to make sure that it still ties in, you know. So, I don't know. I love that. I love the decorating aspect of stuff. So you would but. never wear like um, polka dots with stripes or something like that. You're not that kind of a person, not are you? Very much. <laughs> like even the whole brown boots with black pants is a big stretch for me. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> you are put together. You like that, that everything blends and matches and stuff, mm-hmm. which is good, I think, especially if you're going for a really nice put together wedding. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, if you're just kind of going with the flow and throwing together like a mishmash type of wedding, right. which you can absolutely oh, do if totally. that's what you want. Um, but even that, you know. there's a way to do it that still looks cohesive. Right. So, right. yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you came. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Now I feel a little bit more like I know a little more about this and I can talk a little more about this. Why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you and possibly hire you to do some of their stuff okay well i'm on instagram at chalk period ink period style also facebook is the same at chalk period ink period style and then my website is chalk ink style all one word dot com so glad ginger was able to come out and give us some great nuggets i love nuggets <laughs> Little tidbits that you don't okay. think of. I'm like, you don't like nuggets. <laughs> Not chicken nuggets. Sorry. <laughs> Had to say that. No, just just the golden nuggets that you just don't think about or don't know about until somebody tells you. And you're like, yes, that's that's awesome. Now you know you have some options. The one big takeaway is keeping everything cohesive. Like I said, everything kind of matches. Mm-hmm. Which I am thoroughly for. Mm -hmm. I dislike it when things are disjointed. Mm -hmm. Like, I have some brides that want to do something, you know, different for the ceremony that they do for the reception. And it just, to me, it's not cohesive and their Mm -hmm. ideas don't come together. So I love when everything's all put together, all nice and neat in a little package. (laughs) Nice and matchy, matchy. (laughs) And, you know, from your save the dates all the way to your thank you notes. And that includes everything in your wedding, too. Your signs, your menus, all of that. Your programs. That's the one thing to take away from this talk with Ginger is that keeping everything cohesive and in the same theme and style and, you know, like she said, when you get that save the date and then you get that invite, you're getting a little taste of what that wedding's going to be like mm-hmm. because that's going to be your style. And right. people are going to get excited and start thinking, mm, I wonder what she's going to be doing there. <laughs> <laughs> Email us at info at fromringtavel.com or hashtag fromringtavel on Twitter or Instagram. Don't miss a show. Subscribe to From Ring to Veil anywhere you listen to podcasts and leave us a review. Until next time. No stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtoveil.com. Music provided by bensound.com.